Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree, and welcome to the assembly video for our bell ornament. This is a very classic little ornament, very simple, um, not very many pieces, and most of it's somewhat assembled. Um, this is uh, one of the few, actually one of the only, truly dimensional uh, pieces from our festive ornaments. Um, so this one's going to take a little bit more time, but not much. Uh, so here is the main bell. As you can see, it's all joined together in the center here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go around clockwise, counterclockwise, doesn't really matter. You can choose and just kind of get these sections connected. And we're going to start at the top here. You'll see this kind of, uh, it's a little bit of a skinnier tab here. We're going to begin by putting a little bit of glue on that tab. And it is absolutely super dry here lately. And I can tell because my glue bottle is really getting clogged up a lot quicker than usual. This little tiny tab here, don't need a lot of glue on it, but we do want to cover it. And make sure you spread that glue out a little bit. Move these other pieces out of the way. Grab the neighboring section, line it up. It's a straight line here. Just line those two together and just press and hold. Give that a few seconds to set. So the first, starting from the top, the first section is gonna kind of taper out. Then the next section is gonna go straight down. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind as you work your way down. We're gonna put some glue on this larger triangular tab here. You can see my nozzle is being a little inconsistent there, that's okay. And just line that up, that one's straight so it doesn't taper in or out. It's completely straight, hold that in place. Okay, now the next one, this next section, is gonna taper out a little bit. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we follow the natural curve here. And also, it's a good idea to go through and just fold everything at the score marks to make this whole process a lot easier for yourself. Okay, we've got this tab here. Go ahead and apply your glue. Spread that glue nice and thin. Again, this one's tapering out a little bit. And what I'm gonna do after I get this whole main structure assembled is I'm actually gonna ink this with a little bit of purple ink. It has um, a white core that I wanna try to cover up and I just wanna kinda of distress it a little bit. Okay, so that section tapers out a little bit as does this next section that we're gluing together here. Okay, so that also tapers out a bit. And this busy pattern does make it a little more challenging to see my alignment, but you can feel it too. Just take your time, be patient. And then this last little section, this does not taper out, it's flat again, just straight up and down. So you don't really need to worry too much about that. Just make sure that you get it lined up accurately and you'll be in good shape. Okay, so we've got two sections together. All we're gonna do is just continue working our way around and repeating that same process. Okay, just get whatever you need to get out of your way so it's not in your way. And let's begin again with this top tab here. Just a very small amount of glue on that one. And again, that one tapers out a little bit, so just make sure you're doing that correctly and press and hold. Give that a few seconds. The less glue you use, the less time you're gonna spend waiting for that glue to fuse. That should almost be a t-shirt. <laughs> okay, going to the next one here, next tab. This one is straight up and down. It does not taper out, so just keep that in mind. And press and hold that in place. It should literally be a squeeze and then maybe you know, five seconds, and it should be holding enough to where you can move on and begin applying your glue to the next tab. If you need to kind of spread that glue out to the very edge, I would recommend it. Okay, this section here tapers out a little bit. So just make sure you get that properly aligned. There we go, perfect. It's hard to believe how quickly the seasons have been changing. I think we're in for maybe a little bit of a warm spell this weekend, but that might be the last. 
We'll see. Okay. There we go. Okay, and this last little section here. You can fold things out of the way. You give yourself more room to work if needed. And remember this last section is just straight up and down, does not taper at all. And we're really gonna jazz this thing up. I have some um, beautiful, uh, this is a nice little ribbon, cord, whatever you wanna call it. And just with a little bit of hot glue, I'm gonna wrap it around the bottom. And I think this part, yeah, this part here, just to really make this thing, take it just beyond paper, I guess you could say. Okay, so got that section in place. Moving on to the next section. Throw a little bit of glue on that tab, dab it, spread it out, whatever you gotta do, and line that up. There we go. This should go pretty quick. And you can see how, if you, uh, if you wanna try doing this with the solid score line version, you can. Uh, I personally, when I'm working on and with these dimensional projects like this one, I try to stay away from the solid score lines because I feel like they're not as accurate. And with projects like this, um, they really require um, accuracy to ensure that everything comes out looking correct. And I feel that um, there's just too much of a margin of error with the solid score wheel when it comes to these 3D projects. But for the most part, uh, I'd say, you know, well, pretty much every dimensional project on our site was done with perforated score marks. So I don't really think it takes away from the aesthetic at all. Um, but we have that option in your extras or yeah, in your extras folder. Actually, I don't think we even call it extras anymore. I think there's just a folder called solid score lines. You'll find them in there and you can use that if you, if you prefer. Okay. Moving on down here to the next section. And this is going pretty quick, actually quicker than I thought. Again, it'll go even quicker if you are careful with the amount of glue that you apply. Like I can already tell that that was more than I needed right there. So I pull a little bit off with my finger, wipe it off, and there we go. So we've got two more sections left here and then we just need to join the whole thing together. Okay, move that out of the way and back to the top tab. And you can see how nice everything is coming together for us. And after this, there's really not much else to it. Uh, again, you can, this is your bell. You can do whatever you want with it after we get it assembled as far as embellishments and ribbons, glitter. Boy, I'm sure you guys have tons of stuff in your stash that you could find and put to use on this little ornament. Okay, just get that lined up and press and hold. I think I might've had a little bit too much glue on that one, that's okay. So yeah, we are now uh, just a few weeks away from welcoming our baby boy. Mama's doing great. And the kids are, I think they're excited. Gabby, the other day, we, Liesl had, uh, I think she had it's like three different showers. Um, one, they, they threw her a little shower at work. Um, her CrossFit friends threw her a shower. And then of course, family has, my mom's been sending us all kinds of clothes and Anyway, Gabby was in our bedroom the other day and I said, what are you doing? She's organizing all the baby stuff. So I do think that she's very excited. I was like, you know, it's funny. You'll organize this stuff, but uh, for the life in me, I can't get you to keep your room clean. But she's like, no, 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 I'll clean my room too. And she's in the middle of a huge reorganization of her room, which I'm blown away by. Okay. All right. So now this part here, we want to make sure that you tuck these tabs in on this piece, tuck them in so that we don't have to try pulling this thing apart um, to get the rest of the tabs in there. Once we get this glued down, 
So, and also just to make things a little bit easier, grab a scrap piece of paper, like a real small one like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of glue right on the very end of this. And for this first tiny little tab, I'm just gonna kind of dab that tab with my scrap piece of paper. Just so I don't have to pull this thing apart and risk tearing it. This, this uh, pattern paper that I'm using, I think it's Graphic 45, it is. Uh, it's graphic 45 warm wishes and I you know if it's supposed to be 80 pound But it does feel a little bit less than that and I'm worried that it may tear so again I'm just throwing a little bit of glue on a scrap piece of paper and then I'm literally just Pressing it up against the tab instead of trying to get my nozzle in there and it works like a charm Okay Again, because we don't want to pull this back because we don't want to risk having to pop those tabs back into place. This is a, a good little alternative. Now here, I think we can, we can grab our nozzle. That one is pretty easy to get back in if we need to. So I'll just throw my nozzle on there. And then, of course, for those of you that don't, don't like to use your finger to spread glue around, you can always apply the glue with your nozzle and then use a scrap piece of paper to thin that glue out, although I don't think it does as good of a job. Um, and it's not as accurate, not as precise, I should say. It's definitely accurate, I just don't think it's as, as precise. I can actually feel the thickness of the glue um, with my finger, and I know exactly how much is on there and how long it's gonna take for it to set. See, like that was just not very accurate. I just like getting my fingers dirty, I think. I think it's the boy in me. I don't know. Or the crafter in me. Okay, so again, that one tapers out. Line that up. Nice and accurate. There we go. And that just leaves this little guy here. Now the rest of this, joining these two sections together, or the two ends together, um, we're going to be working from the inside, applying our glue. Again, so we don't pull this thing apart. Okay, all right, so there it is, pretty much done. So again, we're gonna start with that top tab that we started with before. And I think I'm just gonna, instead of trying to get my nozzle in there, I'm just gonna throw a little bit of glue on a scrap piece of paper and just apply it from the inside, okay? I don't have a tiny little camera to put in there, but you can see that top tab, just like the other tabs just like these tabs here, no difference. Keep the other tabs inside and line that up and press. Give that a few extra seconds because we don't have the same leverage we had before where we can get our fingers in there. So just be careful and take your time on this last step. Okay, that looks good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these tabs and just kind of pull them towards me so I can see them from the inside like that. You can see those tabs there. And I think, yeah, in tight spots like that, I like to just use my little scrap piece of paper. And that way I can get exactly how much glue I want on there without going overboard. Okay, so there's that tab. It's got the glue on it. I'm just gonna press that down and hold it. The rest of this is gonna be a piece of cake. Okay, and that just leaves these two tabs. I think I can use my nozzle here. It's a nice large piece, close enough to where I can access it with my finger. Line that up. Perfect. Okay. There we go. And that just leaves these two tiny little guys here. We'll do one at a time. Just wipe off any excess you may have squirting out. Not a big deal. And the final little triangular tab. Almost didn't even have to squeeze the bottle there. I had, had some leftover glue just sitting on the nozzle. And there we go. Okay, so the bell is done. Now, as I mentioned, um, I'm gonna take, and I'm just gonna kind of rough this up a little bit with some purple. Uh, typically, when you're inking uh, something red, uh, sometimes you can find a darker red that will show up. 
but oftentimes when I'm trying to add a little color to red, I'll go with purple because it just kind of looks, well, it looks good. And it's also one of those colors that will actually show up. I'll try to put, uh, I mean, if you have a, if you have a darker red, it will work. Okay. So I'm hitting, I'm just kind of going around like this and hitting one edge and then I'll flip it over and I'll do the other side. That side, that was just easier for me to hold. And now I'll do this side. So you get the idea. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is we do have a little panel that's going to go on top of this here. Okay. And that's this guy here. Okay. And that's going to go right in the center like this. And we're just going to wrap this around like so. Okay. And what I would suggest doing is starting on one of these middle pieces. Okay. Instead of starting on the end. So what we'll do is take our glue and apply it to one of these middle pieces. doesn't matter which one, just pick one of them. Okay. And just go easy on the glue and just pop that right in place. It should fit perfectly onto that segment. Okay. And wrap it around just to make sure that we have the alignment correct on that first piece. It's going to set the tone for the rest of it. Okay. That looks like it matches up nicely on the other side, which is good. So that's good. And we'll just kind of keep pressing down on this side to get that to adhere. That looks good. Okay. We can take and fold back the next section, go easy on the glue and just fold that over. Just make sure that it's sitting flush on the very edge here where the two sections meet up. Okay. Press that down. And it's looking good. I'm going to go over to this side now and apply some glue to this section. Go easy on the glue. Otherwise, again, you're going to be spending hours just waiting for it to set. And if you need to just make any subtle little adjustments, whether it be up or down on this section, now's the time to do it as you're pressing each of these sections into place. All right. So flip flopping here, going to the other side, throw a little glue on there. And again, with this pattern paper, it's, almost, it's kind of hard to see how it's aligned. So we've got to really focus and make sure that it's sitting on the surface correctly and it's looking good. All right. So we'll peel back this last section on this side. Just throw a little glue on here. Let's get that out of the way. Press that down. Okay. And we are also going to glue this little tab on here. The purpose of this is to, in case you're a little bit off on this part of it, it'll still make it look nice and seamless. When we pop that on there, it's going to look nice and seamless. Okay. So all that's left to do with this is throw a little bit of glue on this last piece. We're going to get a little extra glue out to the very edge here and press, bring that down, put that nice and aligned and voila. Okay. looking good. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're going to do this, just flip it upside down. We have this little, um, this little hexagon. Is that a hexagon? That would be five, six, I don't know, whatever. Pentagon. Throw a little bit of glue right there. This is just to kind of stir this up, throw that piece in there, make sure it's nice and centered and press that down. Uh, if you don't want to get your finger in there, grab yourself a dowel and press down with the dowel. That's just to make that a little more sturdy and reinforce it a bit. Okay. Now also we're actually going to uh, hang some bells from this. Okay. So you have this piece here and it starts off like this. You're going to fold it. And this is the part that we're going to use to glue to the underside of our bell, which means that in here we need to kind of glue this together and just sandwich it together. So throw a little bit of glue on one of these sides and close it up. You can fold this flat completely. We don't have any glue here. 
We're just, we just have blue on this half. You can press that down, okay? There you go, just like that. And what we're gonna do is, what you wanna do is just grab some of your little jingle bells. Okay, this is, that's a prototype. I'll, I'll do it with you, okay? And I can actually use this little prototype to get an idea of just how much, uh, just how much string we need here. Um, I'd say I'd, I'd go about because we have to tie these off. Um, I'd give it about just about 12 inches, maybe. Okay, so I'm going to grab about 12 inches. We can always trim it if necessary. So I'm going to go about 12, maybe 13. Doesn't really matter. Okay. And where are my jingle bells? Here they are. I'm gonna go with the red ones here. Okay, so what we're gonna do, first off, where the heck did that piece go? There it is. Okay, so remember this, this little guy here, that's gonna go underneath. So what we need to do is feed a little bit of this through. Oops, that was a little too much. Just feed it through like halfway. And then we're gonna take and just tie the jingle bell to one end, like so. Okay, probably with this braided, this braided string, I might just double knot it. It has a tendency to kind of do whatever the heck it wants. Okay, so we'll tie that through, like so. That's good. I might start incorporating some of my fisherman's knots and just trim that off. Yeah, and sometimes with this braided stuff, when you trim it, that's exactly what happens. It just doesn't like to stay put. So you may need to, uh, this gold metallic braided line is sometimes a pain, but we'll get it to work. I think I might've trimmed it a little bit too close to where I tied it. We'll try that one more time. And I think you get the idea here. Okay, so we have one of the bells connected. Let's make sure we get our string through here. Okay, and then again, uh, I'm gonna use the little prototype here to help kind of gauge how much of this we want hanging out. Because we, we do want the bells to somewhat be visible, um, just a little bit kind of hanging out the bottom. Okay, so uh, again, it's gonna be hanging like this off of that. Okay, and I'll use this little ruler here as a guide. Okay, so on one side, we're gonna keep that at about, I think it's about three inches, I'd say. Okay, so from there to about there, it's about three inches. So we'll grab our other bell and feed it through and tie it off at about that point again, at about three inches. There we go. And you know, one can be a little bit longer, one can be a little bit shorter. Okay, so let's get that tied off and then we'll install that. So just tie that. Let's take a look and make sure that we're Still in good shape, yep, looks good. And I'll do this, give us a little double knot just to make sure it's not going anywhere. Beautiful, okay. And you just trim that off. Okay, so there you go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply our glue to these guys here, the top of this. Okay, I'm gonna dab that a little bit, thin it out, spread it out. And you can just kind of hold it like this. And I'm just gonna pop that right in there. Okay, this you can put down flat. I'd maybe hold the bells and grab a dowel to press that down into place from both sides. Just help it get contact. And here we go. Perfect. Okay, and then of course, we need to just even it out. And there you can see the little bells kind of dangling. Okay. Um, one other thing too, if you want, so that they don't go flying anywhere, you could definitely flip this over like this, 
push this down a little bit and just put a little bit of hot glue right where uh, on top of one of the strings so they're making contact with this little mechanism and then that way they will not move at all. Okay, so that's that. Um, we also have a little top for this. So similar to the little piece that we just put together, um, you've got little folds here. Okay, we're gonna use this surface to glue this down onto the top of the bell, but we do need to glue this little horseshoe shape together. So let's throw a little bit of glue on there. Okay, grab the other piece, just the horseshoe. You don't want to put glue on the other part just quite, just yet. Okay, line that up as accurately as you can. I'm kind of just pushing the whole thing down flat. Again, there's no glue on this section, just on the horseshoe or the magnet, whatever you want to call it. And then we can flare this open like so. And we'll apply our glue to this part. And that's what we're gonna to use to put our string through so we can actually hang it on our tree. Okay. And just get that nice and centered right on top. And there we go. And just continue holding that down until it's fully set. So that's really it for the bell ornament. Like I mentioned, you've got this little area here and this little area here uh, for some nice ribbon or cord, whatever you have that you want to add. And uh, I'll probably bling this out, especially around this area here with uh, a little bit of um, well, just some pearls or something just to kind of jazz it up a little bit. But that's really going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please visit us on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit the little bell so that you get notifications. A bell. Uh, anytime we release a new project, whether it be paid or free. And if you make this or anything from our festive ornaments bundle, I'd love to see it and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Official, or you can type in this little URL that you see here at the bottom of your screen. So happy ornament making, and as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos, and also please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.